Hi, this is Robbie Krieger with The Doors from the Inside, and we're back in 1968. You know, the, the 60s were not just love and peace, there was also the war and, and the dark side. Electra Records president, Jack Holzman. In 1968, the Doors were at the tip of the sonic probe exploring the future, while the evening news was certifying that the world was every bit as crazy and off the wall as the Doors were saying in their songs. Vietnam was live in every American living room, and our troop strength had expanded to 600,000 American soldiers frightened to the very core that they might not survive their tours. 20,000 were already dead. This is the end, my only friend, the end. Well, come on, mothers throughout the land. Pack your boys off to Vietnam. Come on, fathers don't hesitate. Send them off far too late. Be the first one on your block to have your boy come home in a box. The courtly Dr. Benjamin Spock, guru to an entire generation of mothers, was arrested for counseling those mothers' sons to become conscientious objectors. And according to a Gallup poll, 49% of us felt that America's involvement in Vietnam was a terrible mistake. This is the end. Our fragile psyches were further assaulted by the violent assassinations of Martin Luther King Jr. and then Robert F. Kennedy. America was emotionally unraveling, and parents began to believe what their children had been telling them. Anybody here? See my old friend Martin. Can you tell me where he's gone? He freed a lot of people, but it seemed the good they died. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. The Apollo 8 crew, as the proxy of us Earthlings, saw the far side of the moon. For all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message. Jim Morrison didn't have to orbit the moon to see its far side. He felt it. Not to touch the earth, not to see the sun, nothing left to do but run, 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 let's run. Let's run. House upon the hill, moon is lying still. Shadows of the trees, witness in the wild breeze. Come on, baby, run with me. Let's run. Run with me. Run with me. Run with me. Let's run. The mansion is 
king, I can do anything. The Doors' music was a result of flashes of inspiration followed by intense collaboration. Drummer John Densmore and Jim Morrison recall the genesis of the song, Hello, I Love You. Jim was coming on to a black girl on, on the boardwalk. You know, he, he wanted to say something to this black girl, but he was afraid. If you listen to the lyrics, Hello, I love you, would you tell me your name? Hello, I love you, let me jump in your game. Uh -huh. um, she's walking down the street, blind to every eye she meets. Do you think you'll be the guy to make the queen of the angels sigh? Um, forget the rest of it. John Densmore remembers. The sidewalk crouches at your feet like a dog that begs for something sweet. Do you hope to make her see you, fool? Do you hope to pluck this dusky jewel? Man, I just went nuts. Guitarist Robbie Krieger recalls how producer Paul Rothschild urged him to take the song one step further. You know, Hello, I Love You was pretty much just sort of a, a blues at first. And uh, we were recording it for the third album. And Paul said, hey, we need something more for this, man. This could be a single, you know? And so, I don't know, somehow I just cut some riff in my head. See 
where will we be? Summer's almost gone. Ray Manzarek. In Laurel Canyon, there's a store called the Country Store. And uh, in a greenhouse, right behind the Country Store, Jim and Pam lived for about a year. Jim sat up on the balcony and watched the hippies coming down out of the canyon, coming into the store. Jim called the street Love Street. There's the store where the creatures meet. She lives on Love Street, lingers long on Love Street. Lazy diamond studded flunkies She has wisdom and knows what to do She has me and she has you store where the creatures meet I wonder what they do in there summer Sunday and a year I guess I like it fine so far Jim and Pam lived in the same apartment that Clark Gable and Carol Lombard had used as their trysting place. This is John Densmore, and we'll be back with more of The Doors from the inside. Bubby, you say the last used car you bought was a low mileage car? It could never go more than 10 miles every six months. And the car was in repair so often, the mechanic dedicated a wing of his shop in your name. And somebody stole it from in front of your house, but then they returned it with a sympathy note. And it wasn't listed in the used car section, you found it in the obituaries. When you buy a used car from Avis, you know you're getting a late model, well-maintained, well-equipped used car. And best of all, at Avis car sales, you are buying from the owner. <coughs> you say once you got it up to 60 miles an hour, that's when you shoved it off a cliff. Avis, we try harder to make it easier. 
What do some morning television viewers do that you don't do? Or maybe you do do, only you do differently. Do they watch CBS This Morning with Kathleen Sullivan and Harry Smith? If they do, then they may do better than you do when it comes to knowing what's doing. Do you know why? At CBS This Morning, we do what we have to do to give you a more in-depth view of what's new. Do our viewers know something you don't? Chances are they do. Watch CBS This Morning, weekdays on the CBS Television Network. You always know when it's CBS News. Cause I'm a woman, Marjorie. How was your day? Unbelievable. Everything's due end of next week. It's impossible. Not for you. You must think I'm Superwoman. Well, you are super, and you are a woman. <laughs> Anjali, the eight-hour perfume for your 24-hour woman. I can bring home the bacon, Anjali. fry it up in a pan, Anjali. and never, never, never let you forget your romance, cause I'm a woman. Anjali. This is Ray Manzarek, and you'll be hearing The Doors from the Inside. Jack Holtzman. In 1968, The Doors' third album, Waiting for the Sun, instantly shipped gold. That's industry shorthand for over a half million black vinyl LPs sold. Both their single, Hello, I Love You, and the album from which that single was taken were number one concurrently. And as if to validate the door's impact on America's consciousness, Jose Feliciano bossa nova light my fire to the top of the charts all over again. Well, you know that it would be untrue, and you know that I would be a liar if I was to go and tell you, Mama, we couldn't get much higher. Take me, Spanish caravan, yes 
Doors quickly went from playing clubs to the boogie ballrooms like the Fillmore West. Robbie Krieger. That was in the good, good era. The San Francisco uh, ballrooms and New York had a couple too. And that was great because everybody could just kind of mill around. You weren't stuck in your seat, you know. Jim liked those places a lot because you know, they always had the light shows and stuff and you could pretty much get away with anything. Jim Morrison's own thoughts on rock music's evolving audience. When I was in high school and college, to be a teenager, to be young, was really nothing. It was kind of a limbo state. And I think it's amazing just in, in the last five years what's happened is uh, young people have come increasingly aware of the power and the influence that they have as a group. In his capacity as road manager, Vince Trainer worked closely with the top concert promoters, but he puts Bill Graham in a class by himself. When you went into Winterland or Fillmore West or Fillmore East, Bill said, what do you need? He met you personally. It was Bill Graham's form of theatrics. And he always, always was concerned about the well-being of the group and all of their ancillary people. Graham rode herd over the groups when they performed in his halls. Robbie Krieger. Jim used to sometimes get a little bit too far out and start swinging the microphone around. And, and, and Bill Graham was always afraid that Jim would smack somebody in the head with the microphone. So Bill Graham used to go out in the front of the audience and try to keep you know, himself between, you know, if anybody was going to be hit, it would want to be him. And one time he did get hit in the head. <laughs> Jim smacked him right in the head with the microphone stand. Bill Graham. He was lassoing the microphone, you know, sooner or later it was going to hit something or somebody, it ended up hitting me. And I went, after the show, we went to the dressing room and I had a big lump on my head and I said, Jim, that's extremely dangerous to do and you've got to be careful. So the next time we played there, Jim brought him a crash helmet for Bill Graham and it said, I forget what it said on. It was a piss helmet that was painted very nice, very beautifully, uh, very creatively in the psychedelic colors. And it, on the front of it, he had written in the Morrison special. But every time we played, Bill would always wear that helmet. <laughs> it's all over for the young soldier. It was at the Fillmore East that the Doors unspooled another of their innovations, a film they made to accompany their song, Unknown Soldier, Jack Holzman. The Doors knew that when the film frame of Unknown Soldier was blown up and projected 250,000 times its size, and that film was married to the immediacy of the song's live performance, that the audience would be sucked into the music. John Densmore. The Vietnam War was roaring along, so we decided to end it ourselves and we played our instruments live behind the film just as it ended and just sort of became live and like live stereo and the whole audience stood up and started dancing around like the victory World War II folk and I mean, you know, we ended the Vietnam War at the Fillmore East in 1968 a year and a half before the real war ended, but what a feeling Wait until the war is over And we're both a little older The unknown soldier Breakfast where the news is read Television children fed
Make a grave for the unknown soldier Nestled in your hollow shoulder The unknown soldier John Densmore, and we'll be back with more of The Doors from the inside. This is Rayman Sarek, and you'll be hearing The Doors from the Inside. Electra Records founder Jack Holzman had signed The Doors in 1966. People's reaction to The Doors, and to Jim in particular, was mixed. To some he was a tribal shaman, to others he was the high priest, and some saw him as the Lizard King, so amphibious that he could inhabit the private domain of the poet and the public spotlight of the performer. But no matter what role was painted onto him, in the imagination of the audience, Jim would push them to their limits as he expressed their collective sense of freedom in both movement and song. Please believe me, the river told me very softly, want you to hold me. Please believe me 
I promised I would drown myself in mystic heated wine. Free fall, flow, river flow, on and on it goes. Breathe underwater till the end. Free fall, flow, river flow, on and on it goes. Breathe underwater till the end. Those closest to Jim knew he wasn't just the leather-clad demon that his stage demeanor portrayed. He was also unassuming and soft-spoken. Mirandy Babbitts, who designed Jim's leather stage outfits, was introduced to him by his girlfriend, Pam. Sometimes I would go with Pamela, like, to the cleaners to pick his stuff up. And he would have, like, uh, argyle vests, preppy-looking stuff. And he wanted something that looked totally different. It was a pretty unusual look that he came up with. I think he was one of the first stage performers to really go for that leather look, the very solid leather. It wasn't fringes, and it wasn't Western or medieval. Writer Eve Babbitts, Mirandi's sister, and a member of Morrison's inner circle. When he went into that black costume, he was another person. We could be so good together. Yeah, so good together. We could be so good together Yeah, we could, I know we could Tell you lies I tell you wicked lies Tell you lies Tell you wicked lies Hey, you got the world that we'll invent Watching world without comment Enterprise, X-Men 
tradition, invitation and invention. It's so good together. Ah, so good together. We could be so good together. Yeah, we could. Bill Graham. There was a sensuality, animal sensuality about Jim Morrison. If you want to call it snake, you want to call him a panther, that exuded sexuality, especially dressed in dark. And uh, men envied that attraction. We'll continue with one of Jim's big challenges with the doors from the inside. I needed money for college, and I found it as a military policeman in the Army Reserve. I know I'm gonna make it, no matter what it takes. Join a nearby Army Reserve unit, and if you qualify for the GI Bill, that and your pay over a standard enlistment can add up to over $18,000. Be all that you can be in the Army Reserve. Learn more. Call 1-800-USA-ARMY. Paid for by the U.S. Army Reserve. What do some morning television viewers do that you don't do? Or maybe you do do, only you do differently. Do they watch CBS This Morning with Kathleen Sullivan and Harry Smith? If they do, then they may do better than you do when it comes to knowing what's doing. Do you know why? At CBS This Morning, we do what we have to do to give you a more in-depth view of what's new. Do our viewers know something you don't? Chances are they do. Watch CBS This Morning, weekdays on the CBS Television Network. You always know when it's CBS News. Avis believes you should be able to celebrate any holiday you want. Anyone can help you celebrate Christmas, New Year's, Fourth of July, Thanksgiving. But how many people will help you to commemorate the groundbreaking for the Panama Canal? Alexander Graham Bell getting his first busy signal. Anyone can celebrate Lincoln's birthday, but what about the day he got his law degree? They're all holidays worth celebrating, and Avis will help. We've got great special rates on well-equipped, clean, low-mileage cars for all your famous, well-established, everyday holidays. But we've also got them for many of those special-to-you holidays, like the laying of the last brick in the Great Wall of China, the day two Austrian peasants, one tall, one short, made history when they climbed four steep flights of narrow, twisting stairs to deliver Mozart's first piano. We'll always try harder to give you a rate to celebrate. Avis, we try harder to make it easier. Hi, this is Robbie Krieger with The Doors from the Inside. Electra Records founder, Jack Holzman. From the moment the Beatles had sold out Shea Stadium, it was almost every concert promoter's dream to do the same. But these cavernous so-called dream venues presented a whole new set of problems, technical and otherwise. Robbie Krieger describes the group's sound system. You know, for the most part, we had to carry our own PA. You know, nobody had PAs and stuff. You know, we had this truck that we bought, and Vince made these giant cabinets, you know. Vince was into power. 
<laughs> you love to be the loudest uh, of anybody around, you know. And I always was into loudness too. So one day Vince had his uh, giant setup set up for the first time in Madison Square Garden, and we we're having a sound check, right? So he gets onto the mic and he turns it way up and he goes, and I'm sitting out in the audience, you know, and look, and he goes, Is this loud enough for you, Robbie? <laughs> With Morris and there, all hell could break loose. And what was rock and roll about except all hell breaking loose at any time? The potential of danger. Oh, I die before I get old. The completely sold out arena, New York's Singer Bowl, proved to be especially volatile and problematic. Come on, baby, light my fire. Come on, baby, light my fire. Journalist Jeff Silverman and road manager Vince Trainer recreate that steamy 1968 summer evening at New York's Singer Bowl. It was packed. It was packed. There wasn't, there wasn't a seat in the place. We knew there was trouble going all through the performance. And um, believe me, it, it didn't take much to start it. There was some incredible eye contact going on between Morrison and a girl. You could easily make eye contact and you could look down at the audience and pick anyone you wanted to. And I'm standing right between the two of them, actually. And he just looks at her, grabs his crotch with one hand. I'll never forget the words that came out of his mouth. And the look on the boyfriend's face was unbelievable. And in the next moment, up went the chair. I mean, they were whizzing right over my head and they were being thrown, they were being heat. Well, 
what Jim said to this young lady and the reaction of this young man, uh, whether that actually started the thing, I don't know. That's one guy throwing one chair. That place came apart so fast. It was like watching a school of fish turn or a flock of birds change direction. Look up on the stage and Morrison is just dancing around, having the time of his life. This is John Densmore, and we'll be back with more of The Doors from the inside. This is Robbie Krieger, and you are listening to The Doors from the Inside. Jim had a reckless streak. He wanted to take risks. Jack Holzman recalls. One night during a break in a recording session, Jim and I went next door to the local Japanese restaurant where we'd occasionally drink sake and beer and discuss the state of the world. I chided Jim for having been driving without a license, dead drunk, smashing into an occupied patrol car, and getting away with it. Jim said that the only way to live was way out on the edge, and then he slyly looked up to me to see what I was thinking. And I paused and replied, Jim, living out on the edge is great. The trick is not to bleed. Shadows of the evening crawl across the years. You walk across the floor with a flower in your hair. Trying to tell me no one understands Trading your hours for a handful of dimes Gonna make it, baby, in our prime Get together one more time Get together one more time Get together one more time
baby. Now you go along home and wait for me. See? I'm gonna be there in just a little while. Gotta go out in this car with these people. Get f down. Just a one more, one more. Gotta get it all back together now. Just oh. one oh. more. Time. This has been part one of The Doors from the Inside. I'm Jack Holzman with Robbie Krieger, Ray Manzarek, and John Densmore. Our program has been produced by Sandy Gibson, written by Sandy Gibson, Jack Holzman, and John Flex Fleming, engineering by Mick McCabe. A very special thanks to Robbie Krieger and Ray Manzarek for their new musical contributions. Production coordinator, Craig Fisher. This documentary is distributed by Media America Radio and is a co-production of Valley Isle and Media America Radio. Executive producer, Jack Holzman. This is The Doors from the Inside, brought to you by the people at Avis. We're Avis, trying harder than the rest. And by the U.S. Army Reserve, 